Good evening, parents and students. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of information to throw at you this evening. So take some time to process everything, discuss with your family. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call the school or email me at any time. So first off, who am I? Uh, I'm Amber Nichols. I'm the principal here at Cleveland Early College. I have been uh, the principal here for two years now. And um, I want to, before we get things started, I want to introduce um, my team who will be talking to you this evening. First, we have Ms. Jules Hux. She is our counselor, a co-advisor for our student ambassadors, and she also teaches a senior seminar. She will be talking to you later about what it takes to be a CCHS student, and she will go over the savings piece and also benefits for applying. Next is Mr. Grant Haynes. He is our instructional technology facilitator. None of this would be happening without him right now. He will be our facilitator for this evening as well. You will all notice a link in the chat. If you have any questions at any time during our meeting, please click that link and type your question in the document. We will update these throughout the meeting and also post the document on our website for you to reference. We also have joining us Mr. Matt Love. Mr. Love teaches American One and American Two History. He is a co-advisor for our student ambassadors and environteers. He organizes our blood drives and he is a tremendous help when preparing for crew races and things like of that nature. He will be able to give you a teacher's perspective on things. And now to our student ambassadors. We have Alyssa Adams, one of our seniors, who will take us on an in-depth discussion about EO education. Emma Mosteller, another senior, will be, ta will be talking about the importance of crew. Hannah Martin, one of, our, one of our sophomores, will be joining Emma on the discussion of crew. Jada McMullins is one of our juniors, and she will be discussing clubs offered here at CECHS. Aaron Hull, our, another one of our juniors, will talk to us about what seminar is and why it is important. And then Brooke Porter, one of our freshmen, will discuss what college looks like, especially from a freshman perspective. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to give you a brief overview of who we are and what we do. There are great options uh, for your child in Cleveland County. And so this is just an informative session to let you know all the options you have available so that you can make an informed decision for your child. Um, I tell everyone that I meet that this school is such a hidden gem in Cleveland County. Um, we are in Shelby on Cleveland Community College's campus, and we are located in the LeGrand building. And there are really two key things that set us apart from traditional high schools and any other high school around here. One is that we focus on EL education. EL stands for Expeditionary Learning, and this is just a way of life. It is who we are. Our motto is we are crew, not passengers. And so we have crew and seminar built into our schedule because they're important to who we are and to our culture as a school. Um, students collaborate. They build relationships with their teachers and their classmates. Um, there's just a lot that they accomplish in crew and in seminar that you'll learn about a little later. The second thing that sets us apart is that uh, your student can graduate in four or five years with not only their high school diploma but an associate degree as well, either an associate in arts or, or an associate in science. And they start this their freshman year. Most uh, schools will only allow you to begin college classes your junior year. So our students get a jump start on that so that they can build throughout the year. We are very service oriented. We will do things like work in the garden, uh, clean out, clean up the outdoor classroom, build birdhouses, things of that and help within our community. So we're very service oriented as well. Our teachers are in my opinion, the best. Uh, they are very hardworking. They do a lot of hands-on activities with students. Um, some of our teachers don't give a single test. Um, they 
they work on projects instead. Um, we have small class sizes, um, and that is helpful when we're trying to build those relationships with our students. Um, teacher, teachers focus on quality work, and so where um, a student may receive an F, they just receive here and not yet. That's not good enough. Let's, let's keep working on that. Uh, students learn life skills, and we also have a college liaison who is the bridge uh, between us and the college. She works with your students. She will be um, talking to you as well uh, to just keep you updated on the college piece. Our school day is a little different from our traditional um, traditional high schools. We begin at 830 and we end at 345. Uh, we typically, our calendar starts the first week of August and then we're finished about mid-May. Um, our high school core classes, they are all honors level. Um, so be ready to work in that. Um, our attendance is extremely important. Uh, we have very few discipline issues. But uh, the attendance piece, and, and any of these students will tell you, you've got to be here because um, you will quickly fall behind if you are unable to get to those college classes and high school classes. So that's our school day, and we'll go into a little more detail um, throughout the, the evening. A quick overview of the process. One thing I want to encourage you is that you're doing step one, so that's great. You're attending a parent interview. Um, even if you're not sure or not 100% sold on whether this is the right school for you, I encourage you to go through the process because things might change um, yeah, over the course of a few months. So first things first, you attend a parent interview. You uh, receive an application. You can download that from our website. You can pick one up here in our front office or you can get one from your middle school. Um, but you need to complete the application process and turn that in. And then you will have um, a one-on-one -on -one interview. Now it will be virtual um, this year, but you will have an interview students uh, with a county office member or uh, perhaps one of our college instructors. And just a, just a way to get to know you, to kind of understand your learning style and to discuss whether this is a good fit or not. So those three things have to be completed before your name is sent to a lottery. And what we will do is that we'll send to Greensboro and they will work their magic algorithm and then we will have our list of students and we will be taking up to 65 students. Now, you do have to enter your freshman year. Um, so, and that's very important to us because of the cohort nature and building relationships. So you have to enter as a freshman and you have to complete a full year. Sometimes, you know, change is hard. And so when you, when you come, you do have to complete a full year, but at the end of the ninth grade, if you decide, uh, this just really isn't for me, then certainly you can transfer back um, to your zone school or, or wherever. And then the same goes for your 10th grade year. Let's say you make it to years, but it's just maybe not for you, then you can transfer back. So I don't want you to think you're immediately locked in um, when you come. Okay, so that's it for me for now. I'm going to now turn it over to Ms. Hux, who will discuss what it takes or what it looks like to be a CECHS student. So you might be wondering, um, you know, do you think you'll make a good crew member here at CECHS? So a few things to kind of keep in mind to let you know, uh, if this sounds like you, then yes, you would be a great crew member. The five R's that we are trying to kind of make sure we have implemented, you know, students are resilient, responsible, respectful, reasonable, and reflective. So here at CECHS, our students, you're going to be challenged to be effective learners, ethical people, and to contribute to a better world. Our crew emphasizes the school-wide culture that inspires adults and the students to be their best selves, to achieve more than they think ever possible, academically, emotionally, socially, artistically, and even physically. And so now you're gonna watch a video on a day in life.
You walk into school. It's a typical Monday and you're going to your first block history class with Mr. Love. Everything's normal, except all of your classmates are standing outside of the door. The door's locked, there's caution tape on it, and there's a note from the local police department which says that a body has been detected on campus and it's your responsibility to find it. The only clues that you have are some coordinates and using the brains of your classmates as well as your telephone compass, you need to go find this body. So eventually, after walking outside for 15 minutes of your first block, you realize that there is a buried skull with the year 1607, the same year of the Jamestown Starving Time, the first permanent colony in the United States. This is how history is taught at Cleveland Island College High School. This is expeditionary learning. Hi, my name is Alyssa Adams, and I am a senior this year at Cleveland Early College High School. So far during this presentation, you've heard the term expeditionary learning thrown about, but what exactly does that mean for your student? Simply put, expeditionary learning is a form of alternative learning that is practiced at CECHS. For example, at a traditional high school, your history project may be an essay, but here it looks like this. A lot of our assessments are projects instead of tests, and our teachers stress the production of quality work often requiring first and second drafts and giving us not yet instead of us. This means that you redo a project until it's deemed quality. And intensives go hand in hand with expeditionary learning. I like to think of intensives as field trips with intent. Intensives are week-long expeditions that have a final product for you to display. This product may be a trifold about the history of Uptown Shelby, a children's book about healthy choices, or an art piece made of completely recycled materials. Every year's intent has a focus on what your students are experiencing in their time at CECHS, with freshmen focusing on who I am, while our juniors tackle the important question of where am I going? Intensives also include college tours, meaning that your student gets to see many private and public universities in North Carolina as early as their freshman year. CECHS focuses on alternative paths like employment and enlisting as well to help your student on whatever their future goals may be. Intensives like EL, crew, and clubs help bring students together. My favorite intensive was our sophomore trip to the mountains. We spent about three days up there studying the natural history of North Carolina and growing close to our classmates and instructors. If you think your student could benefit from a reimagined and hands-on form of education, this is the place for you. Hi, my name is Matthew Love, and I teach American History I and American History II at Cleveland Early College High School, and I have been here for 10 years. At Cleveland Early College High School, we focus everything that we do around the 10 design principles of expeditionary learning. So the way that I do my class and the way that the other teachers uh, center their lessons are around the idea of collaboration. We try to come up with some sort of compelling central question that our students are going to be assigned to investigate. It could be what caused the starving time at Jamestown. It could be were people like Rockefeller, Morgan, Vanderbilt, uh, robber barons or captains of industry. And so we want students to work together and to collaborate to figure out the answers to uh, their inquiry instead of us just coming forth and providing those answers for them. And so there is an avenue of success and failure associated with that. And at Cleveland Early College High School, it is okay to fail. And so we don't let you stay there though. Instead, you'll have the opportunity to redo that work, to refine your thinking until you get to that place where you've been successful on that particular topic. And so we want our students to make sure that they have the responsibility for their learning, that they are the ones who are contacting teachers, that they are reaching out and really taking an ownership role in their learning. And so everything that we do, focuses around the ideas of expeditionary learning, and I think that that makes our students benefit academically as well as in their own personal lives. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hannah Martin. I'm in the 10th grade, and I'm going to talk to you about CREW. CREW is a unique opportunity to collaborate with peers in all different grade levels. This allows students to work together on homework, projects, and get advice from others who have already been in your position. At our school, we do a lot of crew projects that consist of building birdhouses, creating Rube Goldberg machines, and crew flags. Crew can be very competitive and replaces the yearning to win one would normally have for sports in your zone high school. Um, hi, I'm Emma Mosteller, and I'm a senior at CECHS. The most prominent way this competition occurs is through the crew flag. 
Each crew creates their own flag that symbolizes who they are and has some element to represent each student. The, the tasks completed that Hannah previously mentioned earn badges, and this becomes a competition between which crew can earn the most. Since the pandemic, crew is a bit different, but it still includes scavenger hunts, great learning opportunities, and allows students to bond with one another. In a normal year, crew would end with the amazing crew race and a climb up Crowder's Mountain. At CCHS, we are family. In other words, we'll say we're crew. I'm Jenna McMullins, and I'm a junior who will be speaking on clubs, where the bonds within the CCH family is strengthened. Partaking in clubs develop many things, two being further relations and social skills. Further relations come in place during clubs because you're able to interact with all grade levels. Social skills allow you to interact with many people. Partaking in clubs also encourage your student to think outside the box and most importantly have fun. Clubs are similar to electives. Basically they're extra classes but clubs at CECHS are not like electives in the sense that they are not worth credits. Clubs are a dedicated time for enjoyment and to get away from the basic, basic school curriculums. Just as selective they occur during hours and have a designated block every Friday after fourth period. We offer a broad band of clubs. They are chosen by your own student interest. Some of the clubs are sports clubs for the athletic, art club where you can express yourself in a different style, yearbook where you can snap away and get involved with everything around you, Hispanic culture where you can get creative and feast as you learn about different Hispanic cultures, and volunteers where you use your green, three, green thumb and save the earth, event planning where you grow better as a planner, where prom and many other events will be in your hands. We also have Quiz Bowl, which is a game of trivia and drama where you can get out there and put on your best act for a big night. To conclude, clubs, clubs are a time for individual growth and a break from your normal school life. It is utilized for the benefit of your student development, but not in a normal way. I will now turn it over to Aaron Hall for seminar. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Aaron Hoyle and I am the Junior Student Ambassador for Cleveland Early College High School and I'm going to be talking about seminar. So when talking about seminar, it's an everyday period where students have the time to complete any assignments for any class, including college, or to complete special seminar assignments. Seminar is one of the top things that sets us apart from traditional high schools because not only are you working on your assignments to create a high quality piece, but you also learn valuable lessons and skills for your future, such as college preparation, financial, financial education, interview preparation, and so much more. And seminar also counts as a high school credit. As seminar is one of uh, personally my favorite because it gives me the opportunity to produce my best work for my classes, and I always have the chance to ask for help when I need it. I hope this all gave you a personal insight on how the early college functions. Hi, I'm Rick Porter. I am the ninth grade class representative and student ambassador for Cleveland Early College High School. This is a shout out to CECHS regarding the college portions of their school's program from a refreshment remote point of view. The classes are pretty straightforward. I log into Blackboard, go to my designated classes, and click on them to view my assignments and due dates. It's a straightforward, easy process, and the teachers are so extremely helpful, and you also have a helpline for your convenience. By going to the school, you can graduate with an associate's degree in science or arts and a high school diploma. Their main focus is for you to learn, absorb, and retain the knowledge for future use. I know change is scary, I was in your shoes last year, but transferring to CECHS was the best decision I've ever made. The teachers, staff, and students are so extremely helpful, and it's like we are one big happy family. I encourage you to try CECHS, and if there's anything I can ever do to help, please just let me know. Thank you for your time, and we are crew. Hi. I'm Brooke Porter. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience as a freshman. I know switching schools seems like a scary process, but it's actually a smooth transition. You have a college help desk, a college liaison, our counselor, Ms. Hux, faculty, and staff. They give guidance, direction, and support. You have a support staff for both high school and college classes. 
The main thing is to check Blackboard and your emails daily for homework, assignments, and updates. Classes are in close proximity, easy to find, and very convenient. The school is basically a big square. College classes are just right down the hall. I was in your shoes last year trying to decide what would be the best fit for me. CECHS gave me a jump start towards my career and working on my associate's degree. I know your child will love it here just as much as I do. Thank you for your time. With the college classes here at CCC, our students, they get the benefit of free tuition, uh, book fees or access fees and other um, things associated with that. And for that 60 hour associate degree, that pretty much translates into about a $7,000 savings for just your CCC education. Uh, but the thing is that the savings, they don't stop there because many of our students, once they graduate from here with that associate and high school diploma, may move on to a four-year university. And with that, a lot of universities have that liberal studies or general education requirement that most freshmen and sophomores, their first years in college, spend those, that time taking those gen ed classes. Guess what? Most of those degree or gen ed requirements can be fulfilled from the associate degree that they just earned. So you're knocking off a, probably at least a year, if not two more years. So they're going to be able to get that bachelor's degree in two, maybe three more additional years. So that's where another savings comes in. And that could be up to, you know, anywhere from $20,000 for those two years at one of the public universities to 40,000 for some of the other public universities across the state. And then even more so uh, when you're considering some of those private universities. So it is a tremendous cost benefit to families uh, and to students if you're gonna be having to take on some of that ownership of the financial obligation for your education. We typically have some frequently asked questions that we want to address. Now, might I remind you that we do have a document in the chat if you have any further questions. So the first is, what about transportation? Will a bus uh, still run for my student? Yes, however, it is a little different. So the buses will run in the mornings if you need someone uh, to pick you up from your home. Um, they will do that in the mornings and then they will take you to your zone school, so whether that's Shelby, Burns, Crest or Kings Mountain. And then from there, you will get on a shuttle and be brought to our school. Now, the afternoons are a little different. So in the afternoon, the shuttle bus will take you back to your zone school, but you must find transportation uh, from your zone school to your house. Now, there are times when our schedules don't mesh, and so there may be some times where um, the bus will not run from your house in the mornings, but that's just few and far between. If you are a car rider, things are fine with that. You just, you know, drop off. We begin at 830 and then pick up begins at 345. Now, one other thing about the bus, maybe you don't want to ride the bus in the mornings, but you still want to take advan advantage of the shuttle. You can do that. So you can drive your student to their zone location, whether that be, again, uh, Burns, Crest, Kings Mountain or Shelby, and they can pick up the shuttle from there. Our calendar um, is very different from the traditional uh, CCS calendar. So as I said earlier, we begin uh, the first week in August and that is to allow us to take trips. Now we are hoping very much that next year will be a regular normal year for us um, so that we can do all the things that we are used to that make us who we are. And so that first week in August is a time where we can take trips and, and do those team building exercises to get to know one another. And so we begin the first week in August and then we of course wrap up uh, fall semester at Christmas break and then we have second semester through about uh, the third week in May. Uh, we do uh, try, and another reason for this is we try to uh, mirror our community college schedule. And so anytime they are out, we will get out a little early. So we'll 
get out at 2.30 when college is not in session. Another question is, do you still have the academic clubs like Beta Club and National Honor Society? We do have both of those clubs and opportunities for you to participate. Uh, we have a new Beta Club sponsor this year, Mr. Haynes, and he is doing an excellent job getting students really involved and being able to reach out even in a pandemic. So yes, we do offer both of those and we encourage you uh, to strive to be in both of those academic clubs. Driver's education is another question. We have that once a year. And so it is very important that if you can get it in that first uh, time that you want to jump in. So we offer that usually in August of fall semester. And that will be the only time we have driver's ed here for our students on our campus. Fees. Okay, so how much is this going to cost me? Uh, fees are, we just have a flat $125 rate. Um, the $100 is for student activities. So we will have, and that is once a year, that you will pay for that. And that covers everything. That covers any resources that we have, um, which we will give your students poster board, markers, chalk, whatever they need, um, we will provide that here. So that we will offer resources there. This pays for all field trips, any t-shirts or things that students will need um, are covered by that student fee, $100 uh, for the year. And then you have a $25 uh, technology fee, and that is standard across Cleveland County Schools. And that, of course, goes to your Chromebook case chargers, all of that. So $125 fee per year. Um, and then senior year, it gets a little cheaper. So there's a little break in that. Um, and then lunch. What do we do for lunch? We are still under Cleveland County Schools umbrella. And so we have precious ladies who come out and bring breakfast to us and lunch to us. Um, from TPA. And so if you have money on your account from middle school, that will easily transfer over. So no problems with that. But we do offer um, lunch and breakfast here as well. Okay, and a lot of students will ask, do you guys have prom? And yes, we do, especially in a non-pandemic year, we do have a junior senior prom. And whereas a lot of the traditional schools will reserve the LeGrand Center upstairs, which is a beautiful ballroom and has a lot to offer, our students, they're here on campus every day and they're in LeGrand, uh, the lower level for classrooms. But really more because of our smaller size, we have the you know, luxury of exploring some of the other local venues uh, to host our junior senior prom, things like maybe the Spinning Leaf North Lake location or other things uptown. So we do offer prom. And then things like fine arts. We, we hear a lot, well, my student is in the band or chorus or orchestra and you don't have the fine arts there. So I don't think it'd be a good fit. Well, Maybe we don't have those programs, but if your student has those opportunities in whether it's other civic or church uh, groups, um, ensemble, the arts council, or other club theater, we can still be a good fit for your student. And even if they're maybe doing private lessons or things like that. Uh, and the same kind of goes for athletics. If you have a student who might be in AAU or ball or travel club sports like sharks or cobras or even if it's YMCA rec or city park rec sports and that would still make them a good fit for our school. Even though the CCC Yeti athletic program is underway, our students are not eligible for the college athletic teams, but we, you know, are available, you know, or can go as spectators and things when they open that back up for the season and things like that. So just wanted to throw that out uh, at you so that you don't just write us off just because your student might be an athlete or into fine arts. We can still be a good fit. And then with remote learning, um, our high school teachers, they use Canvas much like a lot of the middle school teachers are using. And then, on, like Brooke said, the, on the college side, they're using Blackboard. So 
Remote learning, we don't know what that option is going to be next year, uh, but we do want to strongly encourage students if they are able to be here physically, whatever opportunity we have, whether it's a hybrid or full five days a week, we really want to encourage our students to be here because in order to uh, just boost that engagement and activity level and connection, uh, those are the things that can really help with that as well. And so, number one, we want to thank you for showing your interest in becoming a CECHS Viking. And as Ms. Nichols mentioned earlier, if you are interested in this option, we do encourage you to go ahead and follow through with the application steps so that you don't miss out on this opportunity. And with that, the attending a parent session, that is the one requirement. Another requirement is a completed application. One thing with that application this year, uh, there's the student part, but also teacher recommendation, counselor recommendation, and an essay that the student will uh, complete. So once those completed applications are turned into your eighth grade counselor, then your counselor will proceed with uh, looking at uh, completing recommendations or asking team teachers to complete those recommendation letters for the student applicants and then also supplying and gathering all of the other supplemental documents. So your middle school counselor has a specified due date. Make sure you're paying attention to that so that you get your application in uh, uh, by the deadline. They will then turn in all of the completed applications to us and we will schedule one-on-one -on -one interviews. So that is another required step of the application process. From there, any of the those who have completed all of those necessary requirements, parent session, completed application, and an interview, those names will be sent to the lottery for the student selection. And at that point, you will be notified and you're gonna be extended an invitation. And it's gonna be, that's your decision to accept that invitation. So that's like the final step to make it all complete. And if for some reason you weren't in the, the pool of the selection, you will also be notified about that as well. But I don't want that to get you too discouraged because it seems like every year there's some different situations that happen where we are able to pull from the waiting list to be able to get some students in at the last minute, maybe, or just because of other people's plans have changed. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can reach out on our social media. You can email me or call the school and we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. We will also have a document on our website, uh, Frequently Asked Questions, so that you can check there as well. But again, thank you so much and we hope you have a great day.